Jillian with D Scott Math and Science. Jillian, today we are interviewing helicopter medics. So this is Shannon. And she's a what? She's a medic. She's a flight nurse. Fight, flight nurse. Okay, say hello. Hello. <laughs> and we are going to ask her questions of how she uses math and science. Job. Okay, so take it away. Well, there's a lot of math and science involved in providing care for a patient in a helicopter. The first thing we have to do before we can ever assume patient care is we have to do math to get their weight. So we measure people in kilograms, where most people in the U.S. are used to measuring their weight in pounds. So we need to know how to do that conversion. The conversion, so that everyone knows, is uh, you divide the pounds by 2.2. So that's the first calculation we usually do because we need to figure out, first of all, if the air cap can lift the weight of the patient. <laughs> and um, we actually can lift quite a bit of weight in this, but we always need to make sure safety is number one. So our pilot takes that part and they always do use math and science to make sure first that the center of gravity is allowable with the weight and they have a whole chart that does that. And then we also make sure that the helicopter can lift the combined weight of the crew and the patient. And then occasionally if we have a smaller individual we can take a family member or a friend along as well. How do you, do you guess? No, it's an actual mathematical chart that they do, and that, again, is calculations that are stuck yeah. by the pilot. I don't know a lot about Do you have that. a scale to stick people on? Uh, generally, the hospital weighs the patients, and that's how we know their weight. Okay, so you're not picking, you're picking people up from the hospital? Yes, and okay. on scene, if it's like a motor vehicle right. accident or something happened, yes, we do do some estimation. We have legal room built in so gotcha. that we know. Okay. And um, as providers, we get pretty good at estimating people's weights. Okay. Um, there's actually a mathematical equation also that some companies use for estimating pediatric weights um, and that's usually two times the age in years plus 10 equals the estimated kilograms for a pediatric patient. Okay. So that's a mathematical equation for you. So that's basically how we start out with math. During the time that we're caring for a patient, we use math with our drug calculations. Uh, we have to do equations, especially with pediatric patients. We dose their medications based on their weight, and that's usually a multiplication or a division thing. And then we have to look at the concentration. So how much medication is in how much volume of fluid? What do you think and about that? We have that? to figure out how much of the fluid we have to give to give that appropriate dose of medication. In. So there's a lot of basic algebra and math that we use. Uh, we also use it in a ventilator, which some people may recognize as a machine that breathes for individuals, and we have to do math calculations with that. Again, a lot of it goes into multiplication, division, addition, um, and again, we base it all off of the patient weight. That's why that first number is so important for us to care for patients. How often do you generally uh, have to get a patient? Um, depending on the base. We usually fly roughly uh, one to two times a day. Uh, my flight partner Billy and I have what was our record? <laughs> four uh, flights five. in four flights in four two. Four flights in five hours. Four flights in two and five hours was our record so far since I've been at this base. That's a lot. I've flown a uh, long distance. I've done as many as four flights in a 24-hour period uh, with a um, hour and a half to an hour fly time coming from uh, further parts of the state. So. You can be very busy or you can't. It just kind of depends on the day. <coughs> Excuse me. We work like the fire department, so as there's a need, we deliver. Um, so some days are really busy and some days... Um, you just go... Well, no, that's not true because while we're at base, we also have to do basic math because we have to do things called inventory. Billy and I had to do a, what's called a cycle count and inventory all of our supplies. That's basic addition, but we have to count every single supply in the base make sure you have enough. Exactly, because if we don't have enough, we're not going to be able to take care of the patients. So we're always doing inventory to make sure we have supplies on order so we never run out. Uh, and then, and then uh, that's the thingy vajigo. The ventilator. The ventilator, the mm -hmm. thingy vajigo. <laughs> uh, do you use math in that? Yes, so that's what I was talking about. We have to use lots of math of the ventilator. Um, 
your lungs are like a balloon, right? And they can only hold so much oxygen in them at a time. And we have to figure out how much oxygen we can deliver to a patient based on their size. And we go off a of weight with, or I mean height off of that. Um, so that we make sure we don't overexpand their lungs, just like you don't want to overexpand a balloon because it would pop, right? Well, we don't want to do that to someone's lungs. So we have to make sure we deliver them the correct, uh, it's called tidal volume. Yeah, balloon is okay, a human, no. Yeah, no, we don't ever want to do that. Hmm. And then, um, who generally takes care of the patient? So, Billy and I work as a team, and we have a team effort taking care of the patient. We are both equally qualified to care for the patient. We go through the exact same training, um, and we're trained on all the same equipment here uh, to care for the patient. So, it's a team effort. Um, which, as you can see, it's very small in here, so we have to work together based on room and everything. So everything we do is working together as a team. Uh, John, what do you do? I do the same thing these guys do. I just do it at a different base and in a different helicopter. And with a different team. Right, I have my own partner in my base. Uh, and then... What happens if uh, there is a delay a with uh, a, the helicopter? Well, I feel like if it's not flying properly. So our mechanics um, use science and math to make sure in engineering, which again goes into math. So we have a mechanic that's part of our team, Dennis. He was out here this morning and he looks over the aircraft as well as our pilots look over the aircraft every day and before every flight, we all look at the aircraft together to make sure, sure everything is in uh, proper working order. Our goal is never to have a delay because there's something wrong with the helicopter, so we're always doing preventative maintenance and everything looking at that. And then as soon as you land, and it, they are taken right to the hospital. Yeah. Exactly, they are. This is a, uh, tell a, a quick, quick, go, hospital thingy, doctor thingy to get to the actual hospital. So depending on where they're going in the hospital, we take patients everywhere from the ICU, ER to ER, we take them into the cath lab, we take them into an interventional radiology suite. So we can go anywhere in the hospital with the patient depending on what's wrong with them and what they need. Any other questions? science and math that you had to do to get qualified? <laughs> um, for my nursing degree, I actually had to take calculus and I also had to take a lot of statistics. Um, the statistics goes into understanding a lot of the research that goes into medicine because we practice what's called evidence-based medicine. So that means they've done studies and they make sure that what people are doing actually provides good outcomes, which means the people end up uh, Surviving? <laughs> yeah, well, or their situations improve based on the intervention or what we did for them. So, uh, for example, uh, if we put a Band-Aid on someone, we want to make sure that Band-Aid helps heal that wound, right? So they'll do studies on that Band-Aid to make sure that's actually helping, right? And what Band-Aids do is they prevent infection and everything, right? That's why we cover up a wound, right? So they do uh, research and so they'll look at 10 people and say, okay, we're going to put a Band-Aid on seven of them randomly selected and not on three, and then we're going to see which groups, you know, did better or worse. Um, and then you have to understand how to um, look at the statistics, make sure they were done accurately, make sure it was a fair chance. So I just said seven and three. Well, there are only three people that weren't given the Band-Aid, so that's not comparable to seven. So that's not a fair statistic, right? So because I understand the way statistics work, it should have been seven and seven people, an equal number in each study group to give the right results for it. Um, calculus was, um, I thought I'd never have to do math again, and then I decided to become a nurse. <laughs> and here and you I are. I got told that I had to take a calculus class as a prereq, and um, uh -oh. I, yeah, I got through it. Um, I got straight A's through nursing school too, but. How long did nursing school? So I did a couple different routes. I decided to get an associate's degree as a nurse um, close to 11 years ago. So it was a year of prereqs and then two years of the actual associate's program. And then I went back to school to get my bachelor's. So you probably had to take a bunch of anatomy and stuff too? Anatomy and physiology was my worst class and then it became my favorite class. 
Um, you have to learn almost another language when you learn anatomy and physiology for science. Um, but once you learn it, it's amazing how much you understand. And I compare medicine to just being a mechanic. It's all understanding how the human body works and how things work together and how one thing can affect another thing. What's the difference between ambulances and helicopter? Well, oh. We're able to provide a higher level of care in the helicopter. As a nurse, I'm practicing to my full state regulations under my nursing practice. So I'm allowed to put in what's called an um, ET tube or a breathing tube in someone where I'm not allowed to do that when I practice in the hospital, whereas the paramedics are able to do that in the back of an um, ambulance. We have access to certain medications. Um, we're able to run advanced airways, which is again the ventilator that a lot of um, times, a lot of ground transport can't do. Some can. Um, and there's just a higher level of training and specialty equipment. We take specialty equipment for the heart that a lot of other people don't transfer as well. Um, and we do a lot of specialty uh, neuro care. There's certain medication drips as well that only we can take. Um, and then, what's the likelihood of um, some, somebody, somebody um, surviving? Probably I haven't on. had anyone die yet in three years. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, there's, that's very difficult to say because we transport very sick people, so it's not a likelihood. We do the best to take care of, of people the best we can. Um, so, again, we, when I get them in the helicopter, I haven't had somebody die yet. That's impressive. Yeah, that is. But again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So who gets a helicopter ride versus who gets an ambulance? So typically, again, if there's things that an ambulance can't take care of, so an advanced airway, um, certain medication drugs okay. that they so, um, need to be titrated, which okay. means we have to adjust them based on the patient's vital okay. signs. And again, that requires math and science. So you have to understand what those vital signs are saying and how they're um, reflecting what's going on inside the body, and that's the science behind it because that tells us your heart rate, your blood pressure, your respiratory rate, those things tell us about what's happening inside the body. Is something working right or is there something wrong? Is there something wrong? So if your respiratory rate's too high, is that because there's something wrong with your lungs or are your lungs trying to compensate for something else that's wrong in your body? Because sometimes that happens too and we have to be able to understand that. Hmm. A lot and a lot of math. Yes. A lot and, and a lot science. of math. And science. Pretty cool? Yes. Very cool. Got any other questions? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Um, hmm. You don't know? Do I have any other questions? Um, okay, yeah, I do. Okay, so when you're looking at vital signs, you're looking at respiration and heart rate. Is there anything else that you're looking we at? We look at blood pressure. blood pressure. We look at your oxygen saturation. And tidal. And what? And tidal. And tidal. And tidal. And I, you oh. said to keep this at a lower level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so you have to learn how to read those and you have to know you have to know in advance what each one what, what the, the variations and, and, and stuff the variations and when we get into uh, children it's even more complicated because the variations change depending on the age so. mm -hmm. and then there's certain things you have to take into consideration too with our older adults as well okay. certain medications can affect the way a heart rate is as well so. hmm we have to understand that so a response that we may be expecting to see given a patient's condition may not happen because they're on a certain medication that stops that response from happening so there's a lot of um, intricate kind of cogs and wheels that have to fit together just right so that you understand how it works and it all comes back to my basics on anatomy and physiology that I learned in my science um, my microbiology that I had to take oh microbiology huh? what's that 
So what is microbiology? She just what is microbiology? So microbiology is so if you think anything you can see under the microscope. So it's the um, the study of how uh, things work at a cellular level. So uh, when you have an infection, right? Like you got a cut, you get an infection, right? You can look at the bacteria in that infection under a microscope, and we look to see which antibiotic kills that bacteria. That's microbiology, and that's how we discover which uh, antibiotics work best for someone that has an infection. I bet that's difficult to learn. <laughs> I, uh, there's a lot of people that work in the labs at the hospitals that went through a lot of time uh, learning that, and that's their specialty. Okay. Uh, forensic nursing uses a lot of microbiology as well. Okay, now how about um, take, taking care to um, avoid well, I mean, you can't really avoid it in, in this situation, but um, manage uh, bodily fluids and biohazards and so stuff like that. So we try very hard to keep all the bodily fluids in control. We try and give medications to keep uh, individuals uh, from having what we call emesis, which is a fancy word for throwing up. <laughs> so we're learning all kinds of things today. Um, we also um, usually have tubes put in places, so if, uh, there's a device called a, ca a urinary catheter that we put in place that will empty urine out and keep it in a collection bag so we don't have that issue. Hmm. Secretions are managed through, we have a suction device in here and we can suction them out with their secretions. Plus our own gear. Well yeah and then we always use personal protective equipment which is gloves, masks. Mm -hmm. Anything else Missy? No? Okay, well then, thank her for her time and thank, thank everybody you. else. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my, my YouTube channel and subscribe to my blog. If you do, you will get a free resource guide with all my favorite math and science websites. And leave a comment below and I'll do my best to respond as quickly as possible.